We're enabling the freedom of wireless charging. If you look back at the history of the iPhone, one thing is pretty clear. Apple was late to the game with many features, adding specific things years after their competitors. But in many cases, they did it right. So right that today, they've even surpassed their rivals. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the best examples of this, but the main one I wanna talk about is the five to six X periscope zoom lens coming to the iPhone 15 Pro models, which has been confirmed by various sources like Jeff Pu, the Alec, Unknowns21, and Ming-Chi Kuo, who's been saying the 15 Pro Max is getting this new foldable zoom lens for a long time time. But of course, we all know that Apple is late, very late. Samsung has had one since the S20 Ultra in 2020, and Google has had one since 2021, not to mention the dozens of other Android phones that already have Periscope lenses. But in my opinion, Apple is going to have a completely different take to this, coming right out of the gate with the number one Periscope camera on any phone ever, so let me explain why. First of all, we already know that the case renders for the iPhone 15 Pro Max show three camera bumps, just like the smaller Pro model, which isn't getting the Periscope this year. So how does that make sense? Shouldn't the Pro Max have a fourth lens or at least look different in some way? On top of that, Unknowns21 just confirmed that the Periscope lens will now be in the place of the current ultra-wide lens, which is in the middle right here, right below the flash. And yes, the current 3 lens is completely going away. So how is Apple going to add a periscope lens with between 5 to 6x zoom because this essentially will create a huge gap between the regular 1x main camera and that periscope lens. Photos taken at anywhere between 3 to the periscope will look terrible. Well, I think I have the answer. This new periscope lens is not gonna be a traditional one like we see in other phones. It's gonna be a periscope with optical zoom built in. So it'll likely be able to cover the entire range from around 3X zoom to 5 or 6X, just like a real zoom lens on a pro camera by using layers of glass and a magnet to zoom in and out within the iPhone. Don't believe me? Well, Sony's Xperia 1 Mark IV from last year already has an optical zoom periscope camera, being able to dynamically zoom between around 3.5x and 5x. And if you didn't already know, Apple uses Sony sensors in their iPhones because they're simply the best so they already have the connection to make this happen. And to me, the only way it makes sense to completely replace the 3X lens with the 5 to 6X periscope is if the periscope has optical zoom. And in my opinion, I think Apple could easily get a custom version that can extend the range from 3X to 5X, making it much better for zoom shots, and I'm sure the rest of the industry is gonna follow. So yes, Apple is gonna be late, but only because they intentionally waited for optical zoom tech to be ready, so they're gonna do it right. So now let's get into some more examples of how Apple is using this late tactic. For one thing, we have the ultra-wide camera. Apple was very late to add this, but when they brought it, they brought a feature that matches the image perfectly between all three of the lenses, so you don't notice any difference in the color shift, contrast, brightness, or anything. It's perfectly seamless when you transition, especially when you're recording video, and that is a huge feature because in the past, it would be so noticeable when you switch between lenses, especially when you take a regular photo and then a zoomed in photo, and the colors don't match between them. That was terrible, and on top of that, the quality of the Ultra wide also was very good compared to their rivals. So right out of the gate, Apple did it right. Now moving further, we also have wireless charging, which Apple was very late to add. It was very funny because iPhone fans said that wireless charging was a gimmick, nobody needed it, it was slow, the cable was better, but of course, Android was right because Apple ended up adding it to the iPhone 8 plus and the iPhone 10, and of course it was very, very nice to have. However, 
Apple ended up making it the best out of any other company because they added MagSafe. Yes, the magnetic charging that makes sure it's perfectly aligned, giving a good charge, not heating up too much, and you can still use your phone while the puck is on the back. Or of course, there's so many accessories that you can use, like a wallet on the back or mounting it in your car. It is just so convenient. It's literally my favorite iPhone feature, and it's so good that it's becoming the industry standard Qi 2.0 Oh, for all phones, including Android phones, which I think are gonna start getting it later this year. So yes, Apple was late, but they did it right. And then of course we have the foldable phone. Apple is years behind Samsung and other Android devices. And why? Well, I believe they're waiting for the technology to advance before they move in on foldable phones because we know there's a massive difference between the first fold from Samsung and the newer Z Fold 4. It's on a whole nother level. And we also have Google's new Pixel Fold. And while it's very nice and thin, those bezels are massive. It honestly doesn't look that great. And we know that Apple has been working on display tech to get the bezels even thinner thinner with the iPhone 15 Pro supposedly having the thinnest bezels in any phone ever, 1.5 millimeters, so it is going to be very nice when Apple comes out with their own foldable iPhone, so they're waiting to get it right. On top of that, we also have USB-C, which Apple is very late to because they've been using Lightning for the last decade and it's way overdue. They're rumored to finally switch to USB-C this year. However, Apple is gonna do it different. They're gonna take it to the next level because we had rumors from Analyst 941 that Apple is planning to give the Pro models this year Thunderbolt ports right away. Not just USB-C, but Thunderbolt, which no other phone has right now, allowing you to connect an external monitor for a live camera feed and also for insanely fast transfer speeds. So once again, Apple is very late, but they're going all out and doing it right. So with that said, we can see the trend of Apple doing this over and over again, but as we know, it is intentional, and in the end, they end up with features that are right there with the rivals at the top or even surpassing them in some cases, and I think they're gonna do that with the Periscope lens on the 15 Pro Max this year. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.